I just moved to Newburyport about a year ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. And, um, you know, I knew about Postfly some, for some friends of mine. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tie with Postfly this week. Um, today we're going to be doing uh, the Deceiver, as you can see, which is a great all-around streamer pattern for warm water, trout, salt water. Um, some of you are going to have size 6 hooks, and some of you are going to have size 2. It's the exact same pattern, you're just going to have to change up the, uh, the proportions of your fly. So it's going to be relatively simple. Uh, hopefully this time we don't lose camera battery like we did last time. Uh, that's the plan. Hey Todd, thanks. Happy almost Thanksgiving to you too. Um, so here we have our example. Uh, this is going to be a pretty, it's a pretty simple tie. Uh, we've just got, you know, you've got your feathers, your two flashes, your eyes, your hooks, and your various craft furs. So, to start, uh, we are going to start with a blue over the light, almost white colored craft fur. I'm going to get my vise set up here. All right. All right, everybody. All right, so to start, you are going, you can see, as you guys can see, there is this little split in the top of the hook, and that's okay. All we're going to do to start is get our thread started right over top of that, and we're just going to tie this closed. I usually go over, we're going to wrap all the way down to where we're going to start to tie in right here, right at the hook point. And I'm going to do right another layer right over the top. And then we're just going to take this and walk it all the way back to our starting point right there, right about at the hook point. All right, like we had last week, um, I've got a couple people here live at uh, Postfly headquarters. And so if you see me reach up and look up and talk to anybody straight out, uh, that is just because we've got some people tying along live with us here. Um, real quick before we start, uh, I just wanted to say that we will not be tying next Thursday as it is uh, Thanksgiving. As much as I want to spend Thanksgiving with you all, I have family commitments. So, what we're going to do is, I'm going to tell you the kit, it's art for two weeks from now, it's already discounted. Um, you can go ahead and order it now or order it next week, doesn't really matter. Um, but that kit is going to be the iron or the yellow Sally Sulphur Dry Fly. Alright, so let's get started on this bad boy. So, to start... We're gonna take our white strung schloppen. We're gonna take out two feathers. And all we're gonna do, the first thing you wanna do with schloppen is, as you can see between these two feathers, the one kind of has that those fibery down feathers down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off those fibers with my two fingers down low. So you can see there. The other one was already nice and clean, so we're just going to go ahead and rock and roll. So really what you want to do now is figure out the proportions of your fly. So I'm going to do about that long, pretty much a little bit longer than the length of the hook, basically. And so what I'm going to do is once I figure out my tie-in point there, I'm going to pull these fibers forward and away 
so I can have a nice little starting point to tie in my, my feather. So hopefully you guys can see that the way I did that there. And then I'm going to do holding the feather perpendicular to the hook with a, a flat finger can be good to hold, you want to hold your feather flat up against the hook perpendicular to it when you tighten down and pop your thread like I just did. So we're going to start that again. Sorry everybody, everybody pops their thread once in a while. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, now we're back in the game. Loosen my drag a bit. There we go. Alright, back to this schlopping. So we've already got it nice and figured out. I'm gonna put that right back where it was. Get my wraps in. There we go. First feather in. And now I'm gonna leave that stuff in there and measure out my second one. And this is gonna go on the opposite side of the hook. So this one's gonna go on the side closest to you. It's okay if they're a little longer than each other. It's not the end of the world. Um, the taper is still going to come out fine. As you can see, I've got those two rocking out the back. Now I'm going to be very careful not to twist them when I trim them. Otherwise, the fibers will twist. I'm going to trim those bad boys. In my handy dandy trash can. There you go. All right, so now that we've got our feathers married in here, uh, we are going to take um, one strand of our flashaboo and we're going to cut it in half like we have been in the past uh, using doubling it over. As you can see, there we go, double it over, trim at the top. All right, and I'm gonna leave one to the side, and then I'm gonna double over the other half and trim that, and leave the short end. So if you guys remember, last week I showed you this little, or a couple weeks ago, I showed you this little trick where you can double your flash over your thread to better control it as you're tying it in. So I'm gonna do that here. Get my flash boo nice and lined up. And as you can see, oh, flash boo is hard to handle, especially singular strands. So make sure you have a good tight grip on that. I'm gonna put that in right where we tighten our feathers. And we're gonna put one half on this side. So I got a little cleanup to do. And then the other half on the other side using the same technique. So put that flash across the thread, double it over, and hold tight with your left hand, and then manipulate it into place. So hopefully some of you guys know the name Lefty Cray, um, the late and great fly tire and fly fisherman and all around conservationist, um, pretty much an evangelist for our sport. Ain't no use if it ain't our truth. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, he created this fly, and that pretty much launched him into, just by this one fly, pretty much into fly tying royalty. Um, so that's just a fun little fact. Uh, he developed this for fishing in his home waters um, in the mid-Atlantic for largemouth bass and striped bass, and it's pretty much made its way through various variations um, into tons of boxes, um, whether you're fishing for trout, pike, anything really that eats bait, uh, they're gonna eat a deceiver. So I took out my crystal flash and I doubled, I took two strands and doubled them over. And so I'm gonna take these two halves again. This is gonna add a little bit more of a chunky flash to it, a little more free floating. 
Um, and we're gonna go ahead and tie this in right the same way you tied in the previous flash and then just kind of trim it to the length of your feathers out the back. Don't worry if the strands go a little bit crazy. Um, they're going to work fine um, and plenty of fish are going to eat them because in the water everything will lay back in the direction you want it to. So using that same double over technique, I'm tying in my crystal flash. All right. And then as you guys can remember, we're trimming that to about the length of our schloppen. Boop. All right. So now it is time to take the other half of that strand of flashaboo, and we're going to use this to wrap the shank of the hook. In order to do this, you kind of just want to lay it in parallel with the hook, get a couple nice firm wraps in, and once that's in, I'm going to get this secure back to where I want to start it, and then I'm going to wrap my thread all the way forward to right about where that, that wire comes back and gets close to the hook, as you can see right there. All right, take a little drink here. New Hampshire edition. Looks like a bud, tastes like freedom. All right, so now we're gonna take this flash of and we're just gonna start wrapping the body. Make, trying to make sure they overlap and you don't have any white thread showing through, but ultimately it's not the end of the world. Most of this is gonna get covered up with your craft fur. This is just to kind of add a little bit of flash inside of the body um, when the craft fur is gonna move around as you're fishing the fly. Hey, Crystal. Good to see you. Thanks, Todd. It is. Woo. And if it comes loose, don't worry. Just tighten it back down and start over. I've got some butterfingers today for whatever reason, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. All right, we're wrapping this forward, forward, right to where I tied my thread in. And if you remember, I showed you this technique where you kind of wrap the material with your thread once or twice, and that really locks in the material um, and makes sure that's going to stay secure. Everything going well in the audience? No problem. Everything's behind. Perfect. We're okay. I got, I got some assistance here. Yeah, that's the key. Perfect. All right. So next step, we're going to take our first trimming of craft fur. Now what I'm going to do to make this easy, I have a rotary vise in front of me. Um, but what I'm going to do, make sure everything, the camera works, I'm going to take this and just Flip it upside down, just like we tied in for the Crelix a couple weeks ago. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to take a tuft of craft fur. Doesn't need to be a whole lot. It can be pretty sparse. I'm going to take about that this much here. trim that. Now one little trick you want to do with craft fur before you tie it in, is kind of take your hands about halfway up it and then take your right hand and flick out all the under fur and just kind of work it out with your hands. Um, really all that's going to do is kind of get in the way and affect the way uh, that your thread is going to grip this material. So now we've got all these fibers looking agreeable. Let's get them on our fly. So what I'm gonna do is to make sure these flare out, I'm gonna tie them in at a little bit of an angle here. Um, and we're gonna make sure while we do that, that it's gonna be about the length of the fly, about the length of the feathers we tied in. So I'm gonna leave about to there. I'm gonna be a little short here. And so I hold it 
about like a 45 or almost like a shallower angle when I first tie in. And as you can see, as I tie, it's gonna pull the rest of the fibers over the top. And that's gonna allow me to manipulate them however I need to, get them nice and lined up, and then I can really crank down, making sure they're doing what I want. And I'm gonna wrap this forward, really make sure material secure. You can push that back. Make a fun little little neck there, right there. All right. So now what we're gonna do? Turn this over. Ice the right way. Get that back in the vise here. Trim this down. You're going to have to do a little bit more trim work. All right. So now we've got the bottom of our body in. This is going to ride hook point down. So you're not really going to have to worry about it. it's going to ride. This is going to be the top of the fly in the water. And we'll trim all these little spare hairs out here after we get this top layer in. So now what I'm going to do is wrap that back a little bit. And we're going to take our blue craft fur out. We're going to tie in another stretch of that. All right. I don't know if stretch is a word. I think it is another stretch of it. All right, so I'm gonna trim this. I'm gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take it, grab about up the body of the fly, and just take your index finger, or your middle finger, however you flick, and flick out all that body hair. You guys would be surprised to see how much is on top of my laptop keys right now. Ah, a little higher. Sorry, I'm gonna fl like, flick it like that. Yes. All right, and now we're just gonna take, get those lined up with the tail fibers there. And now what we're gonna do with this top one, we're gonna get a little different with it. We're gonna do a reverse tie, which is very easy. We're gonna take, you're gonna stretch out the fibers, put them in your right hand Lay that on top of the hook. Take your left hand, pinch it while holding the hook so you get that same length of material. One wrap, two, three. Now that's locked into place. All right, scratch an itch real quick. All right. Now that that's in there, all you're gonna do is take your right hand Push that mohawk back. And then you're gonna wrap down on top of that. And as you can see, this is gonna come out in a pretty shallow little, nice little streamer body. And then all you're gonna do, once that's in there, is kind of just create your nice thread head. You can make it as tapered or as untapered as you want. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I'm gonna get it nice and tight. And then now comes the tricky part. Um, now we're dealing with the eyes. Uh, actually, first, <laughs> take your whip finisher, finish this off. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna make sure all these fibers are back. And so if you want to glue on eyes, you can glue on your eyes. Uh, we're gonna do it on this first one uh, just to show you how it's done. And then on the second ones, we'll kind of play it by ear once we see how we're doing time-wise. So I'm going to take my Zappa Gap. 
which is a super glue. Um, if you have it, awesome, we have it on our website. If not, don't worry about it. Um, some people, there are people in schools of thought that believe that fish pay attention to eyes. Uh, most of mine fall off after the first big fish. So I'll leave it up to you guys, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how it's done. Woo, where is my post flight koozie? I don't know, Todd. <laughs> All right, so real quick, the best way to do this is to, I'm gonna turn my fly, eh, I'll do it straight up and down for you guys in case you don't have a nice rotary at home. So what we're gonna do is just get a nice gob, and you'll see it'll come over the other side of the hook, and it'll be a great way to put your eyes on there. So you wanna attach the eyes with the holographic backing, the flat side. And so what I'm going to do is put put it on the pad of my finger. I don't know if you guys can see that. Like that. And I'm going to take put it on the super glue. I'm going to take my bodkin, which is the needle looking thing in your toolkit. Oh, Brett, are you getting some lag? It might be our uh, our internet. And so, you're just gonna make sure this kinda gets right, right there, right on that little thread head we made. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Hey Brett, let me know um, if you keep having issues. Uh, we'll upload the full video uh, tonight or tomorrow, and you'll make sure you can, you can hear everything. Oh, Chad will kill a kill, I guess it's not. All right, and then for the second eye, you just want to kind of get it on there, make sure it lines up. As you can see, the eyes kind of get time consuming. Make sure your hands aren't getting covered in Zappa Gap. Hmm. Add a little bit more in there. Like I said, there are those who believe that eyes make the difference, there are those who do not. Um, I'm doing it just for, for the sake of the tie. Um, and this one actually turned out pretty well. All right, and there we have Lefty Craze Craft Fur Deceiver. Uh, but you can also use, um, really cool with this pattern, you can use bucktail. You can use any fiber, really. Um, like we've always, you know, it's it's just fun. You can play around with it. So this next one, we're gonna do a chartreuse um, over this sand, um, and then just might have to. Yep. All right. So be careful with these. Um, I like to stick. Uh, I'll take this fly while it's drying, and I will put it in a piece of like cardboard. Stick it through there, um, and then I will just kind of bend this in half. Ah, uh, fell out. Bend that, and if it will stick, or you can just hang them. Really, anything. You just want to make sure that you're su not super gluing your fly to the table, pretty much. Dane, can we borrow some of your Zappa Gap? Uh, you can. Awesome. Yeah. All right, how's everybody doing? Just wanted to, after we finish that tie, check in, um, let you guys know that we do have a promo code, especially for viewers like yourself. It is, the promo code is tie with postfly 10 and that will get you 10% uh, off of fly tying materials, fly tying tools, uh, fly tying kits on our website. Be sure to use that. Uh, the more you guys use that code, uh, the more fun we can have on this thing and the more um, yeah, more awesome it's going to get. So keep using that code and uh, let's start on our next tie. So once again, taking my size 6 hook, getting that locked into my vise here. And then we're just going to wrap down, make sure this hook eye is secured. So just like last time, start. 
like Todd said, keep your line at like a 45 degree angle from the from the shank of the hook and you'll get some really nice and tight wraps. And like I said, we're gonna take this all the way down to just about the hook point here. I'm gonna trim my tag end. All right, so now we're gonna marry in our two schloppen feathers. So let's get, let's grab two of these guys. All right, so I got two. As you can see, I don't have any of that downy, annoying business, so I don't have to worry about trimming that off. If you have it, like I showed you, just hold the feather up take some of these and you can just pull and it'll strip right off that shaft. All right, so once again, I'm gonna do this for about, yeah, <laughs> about the length of the hook back. So now that I kind of have this lined up, I'm gonna pull these fibers forward, create a nice little valley for my thread. As you can see, now we're just going to hold that flat up against the shank. There's one. Now I'm going to take the other one on the opposite, the side closest to myself, and do the same thing. I'm going to find my little tie in point, and I'm going to make so you guys, I'm trying to show you on the webcam. I'm gonna make my nice little V here, holding it flat up against the shank of the hook. One wrap, two, three, four. Making sure it's snug and not so tight. These snap threads. I'm talking to myself there. And then once that's secure. We're going to go ahead and trim off our excess feathers. You can either push brush those back and make a few more wraps like I'm doing here or do whatever you want with them. I don't really care. So we've got those hanging off the back. Do you guys remember we're going to take our one strand of Flashaboo. Pull that out. We're going to do that double over trick where you're gonna pull it and fold it in half over your index finger, adjust it to where you need it to be, and then once you're there, just trim it. Sorry about this angle, everybody. Uh, Chato, un not unfortunately, um, we will not be doing this live next Thursday at Six. Uh, it is, unfortunately, um, as much as I'd love to be tying flies, I'm going to be uh, knee deep in my family Thanksgiving and hopefully couch deep in a football game. Woo! So uh, we will be tying the Yellow Sally uh, dry fly kit. I'll put the link in the comments after this and we will. Uh, we'll be tying that, not Thanksgiving Thursday, but the Thursday after. So, all right, using that same trick I showed you, where you take the thread and you double the flash over it, you're going to use that, secure that in place, one, two, three trapping wraps, and then leave it. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, if I can find where that little strip of flash boo went. There it is. All right, same thing as before. Take it across the thread, bend it back until it's double, doubled over. Using your left hand to manipulate it into place, and then using your right hand. One, two, three, there we go. That's all you really need. Um, this material isn't gonna move too much. Um, it's not gonna try and run away from you. It's pretty easy. Don't worry about it. <laughs>
<laughs> Todd, as much as I wish I was tying flies, will not be able to. All right, so next step, our crystal flash. I'm gonna take one strand of the crystal flash, cut that in half, and then you're gonna take one of those halves and cut that in half again. So like that. I'm gonna put my one to the, to the side, and I'm gonna take my remaining half and trim that. All right, so now we've got our two strands of crystal flash for the tail. Using the same technique we did for the flash of boot, double it over your thread. And use your left hand to manipulate it. One, two, three, three wraps. That's secure. And take our second strand. We're gonna bring that back, there we go. One, two, three. There we go. Now we've got our tail flash in there. Everybody's still hanging. <laughs> Gobble gurgler. I like that, Todd. Um, there's actually a, uh, I believe Orvis has a really fun uh, couple of patterns they put out every year where it's like a turkey emerger, some like crazy spun deer hair stuff. Um, that would be a great way to, if you want to do something fun like that. Unfortunately, I do not have the bucktail spinning skills yet. I'm training. Um, and we'll be doing some, we'll be doing some fun, more themed stuff um, as this continues to grow. Uh, so where's everybody from this evening? Uh, get a little quick roll call. I saw our buddy from, where is he? Kyle from Tennessee. Where's everybody else from? Todd's from up here in Mass. All right, so now I'm gonna do my quick little, everybody's answering. I'm gonna get my flashaboo in here, tie that in on top, wrap down the shank until right about where that little wire starts. That's where we'll make our head. So now I've got our thread right up here, flashaboo at the tail. Oh yeah, Todd, I love a nice, really long sand deal deceiver. Those feathers are expensive though. East coast of Canada, what's up, Ted? We got somebody here in from Chi-Town. I don't know if you guys actually call it that. Um, all right, so we're just gonna wrap the flashaboo up the shank. Four, five, six, seven. I personally uh, hail from South Central Pennsylvania, home of the legendary Latort. Steelers suck. Watch your mouth. Um, no, we will not be bringing sports or politics into this fun time, <laughs> sir. Except for when the Steelers won the Super Bowl. Um, so yeah, so now we've got our little flash burr in there. Nice little shiny body. Uh, yeah, so I'm from uh, South Central Pennsylvania. I grew up doing trout and smallmouth, and I've had a deceiver in my fly box since I think I started fly fishing. Uh, one of the first flies I learned to tie, strictly because I lose a lot of them to fish. <laughs> hey, Sean, what's going on? Uh, Pete is actually on a voyage. Um, he had to make a run home early. Uh, but he will be joining us for the next one. Hey, Miriam. That's awesome. Stardom Young. I got Sean O'Neill here still living it in the Steelers. Crystal's got Steelers. I haven't heard a thing from the Pats, but I don't know. Oh. All right. <laughs> Ow. So this next one we're going to do uh, with our chartreuse and our cream, light, the lighter colored of the two tans. 
And again, we're gonna take our fly and rotate it upside down, just to make this tying um, a little bit easier for y'all. Let everybody flip their fly over. Miriam, Bedford, Pennsylvania is a phenomenal fishing area. Uh, I love the I love the Laurel Highlands. It's one of my favorite places to fish. All right, so let's get we're gonna get another nice tuft of craft fur, the lighter colored for our belly. If you guys remember from the previous one. Stretch it out, pinch it about halfway up, and flick. You just really want to get all these underbody fibers out of here. They're short, they're not really going to help us, they're just going to add bulk, add weight, and they're not, you know, they're going to make your thread slip, you just don't want them in there. So I'll work with it for a couple, mess with it a little bit. Alright, now I got it nice where I want it. So. We're gonna reverse tie this like we did the top one yes, the, uh, on the last pattern. So again, you kinda wanna measure it out, uh, taking your right hand, find the length you want here. And as you can see, there's that little tag end behind my thumb and forefinger right here. So now I'm gonna take same pinch point, my left hand, <laughs> And you're just gonna transfer it. You just wanna get it. Yep, get it back once you've got the right length. Ooh! Ran away from me. So now you can see that's in there. One wrap, two, three. You wanna make sure a little bit, you can use your thumb to kind of work the fibers around the shank of the hook a little bit if you'd like. Get those down. We're gonna take our right hand here, push everything back over the top. Then we're gonna tie that down. So the fibers gonna end up over the feather, the white feather from the top, right? Not straight. Yes. Yeah, so you're gonna have your slopping's gonna be hanging out of the back, wiggling like a tail, and then the craft fur on the top is gonna to breathe and add that body. Alright. So now that we've got that in here, honestly, if you didn't tie in anything on the top, it'd be a pretty nice shrimp pattern. All right, so now everybody's, hopefully everybody's catching up. I'm gonna flip my fly back over. All right, make sure all that down material stands down low. No, 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 no. We're going to wrap back to where, right about there, where we tied in that first stretch. And we're going to take our chartreuse craft fur. Same thing, take a nice clump out of it. <coughs> and we're going to trim that down. Remember, don't forget, always flick. Get all that under fur garbage out of there. You can see how much, probably, hopefully, how much is flying out on the right, <laughs> by my right hand. Flick it! As I'm getting all this craft fur loosey goosey. I'm gonna trim off, make these ends flat. All right, and then same thing, you're gonna kind of measure it out, just kind of eyeball it. Once you have that tie-in point, pinch that with your left hand and turn it over. Grab it with your right, get it set up, then lay that down on top of the hook. Grab it with your left hand, one wrap, two, holding that tight, I'm gonna manipulate and push some of these fibers around the sides of the hook so I get a nice clean two-tone body. And just like before, you're just gonna take this, 
push it down over the top. Doesn't have to be pretty at the front. Your th thread will take care of all that. And again, like I said, we're just gonna make a nice little thread head, making sure all of our materials are covered up on the front before we get in uh, with some of this glue action. Make sure this is nice and tapered. There we go. As you can see, got our nice hollow deceiver. Trim these two, two misbehaving fibers up the front. Thanks, Jason. Um, Sean, unfortunately, I uh, cannot because, or I'm not sure what you're referring to, but the, you talking about the flicking or the, the reverse tie? Because if I did it in front of the camera, it'd be all out of focus and it wouldn't work out. You'd be really, you'd be more confused. But I will upload a short video of how to do basic reverse tying next week or later this week and it'll be nice and simple and straightforward for you. So like I said before, you can, now that we're done with the, the fly stuff and all the materials, we're just going to whip finish this and then like I said, if you would like to put on your eyes and you want to put those eyes on there, you can if you have super glue. Um, if you do not, Go ahead and uh, yeah, you're you're done with your deceiver. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do eyes on this one, and then unfortunately we're gonna have to uh, sign off here um, as our camera battery is about to die. Don't want that to happen, and we're working on that to make sure our broadcasts are continuing to be longer. All right, so just as we did before with these eyes, I'm gonna tape my Zappa Gap gel here. It's available on our website. Um, or any other gel based super glue. And I'm just going to put a nice gob on the, the side facing the camera here. And I'm going to take my first 3D eye. And like I said, I'll try to do this for the camera. You're going to want to lay it on top of your thumb or your finger like this with the flat side facing up. Hope you guys can see that. So it's flat. I'm going to take my finger, get that stuck to the glue. And then just like I did before, I'm taking my bodkin, which is the long needle tool you have in your tying kit. And I'm just going to get this into the position I want it to. I want it right about there. Alrighty. Never store your bodkins point up. Had a friend named Whole Hands McGee. He had a lot of holes in his hands. Okay, so we're taking our second eye. Putting that on the pad of your finger like we did before. Flat side, reflective side up. I'm gonna do this on the other my left hand here. Like I said, if you need to add more super glue or whatever, apparently I don't because my thumb just stuck to that. Uh, maybe adding a little on the bottom. But other than that, you've got your chartreuse over cream deceiver. Everybody in the audience doing okay? We're doing good. Awesome. We're independently engaged. Yes, we are. Awesome. So, uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Tie with Postfly. Remember to use the promo code Tie with Postfly10 when you're shopping on postflybox.com for any tying materials, tying tools, and tying kits. Uh, remember, our kit for next week is the Yellow Sally. It is already discounted on the website, and you guys can buy it now. Again, we're gonna be tying this 
Uh, not this, not Thanksgiving, but the Thursday after. Can't wait to see everybody there.